When I first started, I started taking seminars, going around from seminar to seminar. And finally, one of the seminar guys said, you know, if you really want to do this stuff, you better find a mentor, somebody can help you do it. Being a type B, that was totally true because I couldn't pull the trigger. And I finally uh, ran into a guy that was a broker. And uh, I said, you know, I, I heard you own about 75 homes, plus you help other people buy homes. I said, can you help me? And he said, sure. He said, uh, when can you come by? I said, well, I work 60 to 80 hours a week. I don't have a lot of time. He said, well, do you get a lunch? And I said, yeah, I get a lunch sometimes. He said, okay, set an appointment. Come over and see me for lunch. I'll take you out and, and show you what to do. So I took off lunch, and I went over to, to his office. And he stood up, or he came to me, shook my hand, and handed me a pile of papers about that thick. I said, what is this? He goes, this is 10 houses that every single one of them is over 100% return. He goes, um, I'm going to take you out today and show you these houses and let you figure out which ones you want to buy. And he said, how many do you think you're going to want to buy today? Is anybody here a type B? What's wrong with that statement? We'll start with the word today. <laughs> type Bs don't do anything today, right? You've got to anal analyze it and analyze it and analyze it and put it off and put it off and put it off, whatever. And uh, so I said, no, look, I, I think we've started off the wrong foot here. I'm not going to buy a house today or, or a group of houses today. And he looked at me and he said, are you wasting my time? And I really didn't understand that approach. It was kind of confused me, kind of irritated me a little. I said, what do you mean? Because I went to all the work. I did this analysis. I found the deal. I analyzed the deal. I ran the rental comps. I, I analyzed what the cash flow would be and what the rate of return capital gains and cash flow would be. Here it is. All the work's done. All you have to do is pick one and buy it or pick a couple and buy them. Why are you here if you're not here to buy? What are you doing other than wasting my time? And I said, do you treat all your customers this way? And the guy goes... Have you bought anything from me yet? I said, no. He goes, you're not a customer. <laughs> you're a tire kicker. He said, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. Get in my car. I'll drive you out and show you some of these houses. These houses were in the worst part of town ever. It's an ugly part of town called Bel Air. <laughs> I went into this ugly part of town. He showed me these houses. And what had happened was, they were all Fannie Mae foreclosures. And uh, back then, they had a thing called RTC. And the government uh, foreclosed on all these things from Fannie Mae. And you lost, as Americans, we lost $800 billion. Well, what they did is they took these houses, and Fannie Mae was totally renovating them completely back to brand new and selling them with 10% down as a down payment. And then they were Fannie Mae financing to get rid of them. That was how they were trying to get all these off their books. And so I went and looked at this house, and it was completely destroyed. And the guy's telling me, what we'll do is we'll buy this thing. We'll get the seller, which was Fannie Mae, to totally renovate it. Then they'll put a loan on it for only 10% down, right? And uh, you'll have a brand new rent house, you know, for 50 cents on the dollar. Because the, originally the house had been built for 50 grand. He was telling me I could buy it for 25 grand, put $2,500 down, 10%, $500 in closing costs. I'd need 3,000 bucks. He said the house will rent for $500 a month. Your payment would be 280. You'll make $220 a month positive cash flow times 12, which is 2640. Uh, and with 2500 with $2,500 out of pocket, that's 132% return, something like that. That was the numbers thrown in. And I, I couldn't really believe it, you know, and it seemed like, okay, you're buying a house that's worth 50 for 25, that in itself is 100% less, but on a $2,500 investment, that's a thousand, a thousand percent gain. Do you understand that? If you make 25,000 on a $2,500 investment, that's a thousand percent return. The cash flow is 132% return. And I'm sitting here, it's boggling my mind. And he says, so 
what do you think? You like this approach? I go, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. And I said, but there's only one problem. I said, I don't have, tw- have 3000 bucks. He goes, how much can you come up with? And I pulled out my credit card and it said $2,500 max. I said, I'm going to put it on this credit card for 2500 bucks. And the guy goes, okay, then we'll write in here that the seller will pay your closing costs for 500 bucks. And I go, will they do that? He goes, I don't know. He says, you never find out until you ask. So I'm just sitting here in a daze, right? I mean, I'm really, this is way over my head. To me, you buy a house, you pay full price, you put 20% down, then you fix it up, whatever. So I turn around, and this guy's on the hood of the car, and he's filling out a contract. I go, what are you doing? He goes, I'm writing that offer up you wanted to make. I said, no, I didn't want to make an offer. He goes, what was all that? I said, conjecture. <laughs> Thinking out loud. And then, folks, this is the guy who changed my life, literally changed my life. You know, in life, you like to hope that you're not the smartest guy in the room sometimes because the smartest guy in the room, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you'll never, ever grow. This guy looked at me and he said, Dell, are you a man? I said, I'd like to think so. I'm 240 pounds, ripped to shred bodybuilder. I would like to think so. He goes, no, a real man. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, Dell, you live in a little 600, 700 square foot condo over here on Willcrest, one block from here little one-bedroom apartment, condo. You, your wife, your child. You're poor. You're broke. You work in a health club. Do you want your family to live that way the rest of your life? Or would you like to make something of your life? Do something. Leave a legacy for your child. It's time for you to step up and do something in life. Right? I said, you know, I understand what you're saying, but my wife and I have this agreement that we never make decisions without the other one. He said, Dell, let me ask you a question. Is your wife a real estate agent? No. Is she a real estate broker? No. Is she a financial planner? No. Is she a banker? No. Does she know anything about money? No. So, Dell, what happens when you go home and say, honey, we've been doing what you and my dad said our whole lives, putting money in a 401k, and we're living broke and having nothing, and we'll have nothing the rest of our life. Here's a way to make thousands of percent returns, if not at least hundreds. What if she says to you, Dell, no way, never in a million years am I going to let you go make us that much money. I want to live just like my family did, to be poor and destitute the rest of my life, just like my family. Because I love them, and my dad and mom are smart, good, wholesome people. You're trying to take us off into the dark side. Become one of those rich, ugly, mean people. What if she said that to you? Would you not do it just because she told you she wants you to be poor the rest of your life? And by the way, that's exactly what my first wife said to me, and that's why she is no longer my wife. On Facebook, she writes me all the time and puts me down, says, you know the difference between a porcupine and a BMW is? The BMW has the prick on the inside. There are people out there that want you to stay poor. Do you understand that? Your family is one of them. Your spouse might be one of them. Your friends are definitely one of them, and your boss is absolutely one of them. He said, Dell, it's time for you to step up and be a man, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this pen, put it in your right hand, take your left hand, reach down between your legs, and if there's anything in there, sign this contract. That's how I bought my first house, under pure duress. <laughs> Went home that night, did not tell my wife. First of all, I didn't believe it was actually going to happen. Second of all, I was hoping it didn't happen. And third of all, she was treating me like I was sick, and she was being really nice, and I didn't want to tell her to mess it all up, right? The next day, after a night of no sleep at all, I got up and I called the guy. and said, so what happened? And he goes, well, good news, bad news. They got your offer. And it's good enough to be on the table. I said, what does that mean, be on the table? He said, well, there's a bunch of other offers. And so what they want to do is they want to do a highest and best. I go, what is a highest and best? They want you to, and I love this terminology, you sharpen your pencil and come back out there with a higher bid. You've got to be able to come to the table with a little more money than they're going to take the best bid. I said, 
I don't want this bin. And I'm definitely not going to pay more because I don't even want to pay this. He said, okay, then we'll just let it ride. So another day, another night, get up, call the guy back. So what happened? He goes, well, I got some good news and bad news. I said, what is the good news? The good news is you won the bid. I said, what? Are you out of your mind? He goes, yeah, you won. I said, what's the bad news? He said, no way, never in a million years would they pay your $500 closing house. That's against Fannie Mae regulations. They can't do it. And you know what I said? <sighs> I guess we're out of this one. He said, what do you mean? He got really mad, right? Because he's putting up with all my hogwash. And he gets really upset. And uh, I said, Bill, 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 Bill. Sometimes, you know, a man has got to draw a line in the sand. Sometimes a man has got to stand for something so he's not falling for anything. Look at what we did. We went out and worked hard to put this proposal together. Made this incredible offer that was going to help them out of their bad situation. And what did they try to do? Rip us off for another 500 bucks. I go, Bill, that's just not American. He said, Dell, let me ask you a question. So what's that? He says, is the $500 the only thing keeping you from doing this deal? And right then and there, I knew I was dead. Have you ever been in front of a salesman that knows how to sell? So, Paul, you're really not ready to move forward because the car's not the color you want. If I could get you this in black, could we move forward with this transaction? And you're going, you son of a... I know you've got one in black somewhere. <laughs> right? You know you're dead in the water. And I said, well, of course, it's just the 500 bucks. He said, here's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to rent this house before you even close for 500 bucks, and I'm going to get the first month's rent and a security deposit, so I'm going to bring $1,000 to the closing table for you, and all you need to come up with is $2,000, and I know you can do that because your credit card goes to $2,500. <laughs> and I said, you can't rent a house before I own it. He goes, I absolutely can rent a house. I said, nobody will rent the house before you own it. He says, I can absolutely will because a good tenant has to give you 30, 60 days notice and they want to know they have a place to go before they give that notice to their landlord. It's only the bad tenants that show up the day after you finish the rehab, and they've got all their crap in the back of their truck, and they're ready to rent that day. Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> you can see them driving up, can't you? Don't, you don't, don't, don't. Come and listen to my story about it, right? Good tenants. The ones that pay and don't destroy your house want to rent a month in advance of when they're going to move in. Does that make sense? Anybody understand that? And by the way, the lady the other night said she did it. Thank God at least one person out of 38,000 customers listened to what I said. So he rented it in advance. Got me the 1000 bucks, And so I had a brand new home, completely brand new, and rented the day I closed on it. I'm standing there at the title company signing all these papers which works like this on your first close. There's a stack of papers about two, three, four inches deep, and you pull the first one up and you start reading it. And you're reading, and you're reading, and you're reading. And you put that one down and you grab the next one and start reading. And then finally, your broker, your consultant, somebody puts his hand on the pile and says, let me explain to you what they say. If you don't pay, they're taking the property away. If you do anything wrong, they're taking the property away. If they take the property away and it's worth less than what you owe on it, they're coming after you for the difference. Everything else in there is just another way they're going to destroy you if you don't do what you're supposed to do. Now, either sign the papers or don't. And you start signing. Because you don't know what any of it means anyway. Does that make sense? And so, you go through... You rely on your consultant, you rely on your attorneys, you rely on your CPAs to know that stuff, to make sure it's all right for you. Does that make sense? So forth. So he looked at me and says, Dell, so what do you think? You want to do any more of these? And I said, yes. He kind of chuckled a little bit. He says, so how many do you want to do? I said, three more. It sounded so convincing, three. He goes, why only three? I said, I've only got three more credit cards left. <laughs> 